This is a course about the 19th century, or more specifically, what happened between this event and this one. The first event was the French Revolution, centered in Paris in 1789. The second took place about 150 miles to the east and about 125 years later, World War I. This is a course about what happened in Europe between those dates and the impact those changes had in music, visual arts, politics, theology, and the popular imagination. Together, we'll look at why music started out sounding like this and ended up sounding like this. Or why paintings of one artist went from this in 1800, a family portrait of Charles IV of Spain, everyone balanced, uniformly lit, regal, static, to this just 14 years later, messy, violent, dark and active, a testament to the bloody occupation of Spain by Napoleon's troops. Or how humankind affected their landscape, changing spaces that once looked like this into scenes marked with train tracks, locomotives, steam, and smoke. We'll look at how ideas spread and influence politics and culture, like those of Karl Marx, the great German political philosopher, historian, and socialist revolutionary, whose grave outside London bears the final line of his most influential book, The Communist Manifesto, and how the passion for observing small changes in animals led Charles Darwin to come up with one of the most significant ideas in human history, an idea he encapsulated in the final line of his most influential book on the origin of species. Thus, from the war of nature, from famine and death, the most exalted object which we are capable of conceiving namely the production of the higher animals, directly follows. There is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers having been originally breathed into a few forms or into one, and that whilst this planet has gone cycling on according to the fixed law of gravity, from so simple a beginning, endless forms most beautiful and most wonderful have been, and are being, evolved. We'll see how the obsession for collecting things and organizing them into groups helped highlight relationships between the items and created a meaningful connection for the viewer, and how those collections expanded into comprehensive inventories of the natural world, human inventions, and artistic expressions, the world's first museums. In the 19th century, the first Vatican Council of the Catholic Church declared the Pope to be infallible that is, without error. Why did it take 1,870 years for this doctrine to take effect? What was it about the 19th century that required such thinking? One answer is the work of this man, Friedrich Nietzsche, the great German philosopher who famously declared, God is dead, God remains dead, and we have killed him. The idea of the death of God influenced a host of artists, including Caspar David Friedrich, who painted the ruins of a once great cathedral in a winter forest, one of the most arresting images of the century. It also inspired Richard Wagner, the great opera composer, to write the story of the hero Siegfried in a six-hour opera called Götterdämmerung, Twilight of the Gods. During the French Revolution, mass media had one primary outlet, newspapers with texts and illustrations. By World War I, motion pictures were entering their second decade, having firmly established specific techniques and grammar, leading to scenes like this, where Alice meets the Queen of Hearts. In this way, motion pictures added the dimension of time to illustrations, a significant transformation of the public's engagement with media and the arts. The public itself was transformed from the vestige of the Renaissance city-state 
to modern countries like Italy and Germany we are familiar with today. This is one of the main influences of the French Revolution, putting power into the hands of the people. The long 19th century is a story of spectacle and larger-than-life characters. It started out with this man, Napoleon Bonaparte, thinking he could lead the French army to conquer most of the civilized world. And it concluded with this man, celebrating the start of World War I in a public square in Munich. Of course, Hitler's ideology, that one race is superior and that others must be annihilated, was far more destructive. Yet these ideas clearly had their roots in the 19th century. Still, the 19th century is a time of hope and progress and optimism, where more and more people gained access to ideas and artworks that transformed their lives. I hope you will join me in this journey, looking at the biggest events, the greatest spectacles, the most beautiful paintings, and the sublime music that make up the arts and history in the 19th century.